Hi everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Counseling Conversations, insight from Greensboro College's Counseling Services. This podcast features discussions and insight from Micah Wyatt, the Director of Counseling Services here at Greensboro College. Micah has a bachelor's degree in psychology, master's degree in both mental and behavioral health and marriage and family therapy, respectively. He is currently a PhD student in counselor education and supervision and is a licensed marriage and family therapist. On today's episode, we're talking about dating and relationships in college. I'm here today with our Director of Counseling Services here at Greensboro College, Micah Wyatt. How are you doing today, Micah? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm doing good. good. So this is the first episode of a new series that's launching out of the counseling services here at yeah. Greensboro College. Do you want to talk a little bit about like what the mission of the show is? Yeah, man. Uh, coming to counseling can be difficult, right, for a lot of people, especially, you know, college students. They deal with a lot, a lot, a lot of pressures on them. And sometimes you don't necessarily feel like coming to a actual counseling center in a counseling setting and speaking with someone in person about what you may be going through. And so my hope with this is to kind of disseminate some information, get information to them that is useful, right? So they can listen to it on a more public forum and they don't have to worry about going through the rigmarole of having to come actually sit in the center with either myself or one of the master's level clinicians and Bearing their heart out, right? Yeah. Not unless you want to. Now, if you want to, we're open to it, right? But, yeah. but this is just another avenue that you can get some of that information and you can kind of take some tools and apply them to your life in a way that's going to be healthy and beneficial. Yeah. So it's like another opportunity where if you right now not comfortable going to a counseling center, you can still receive counseling through this podcast. Right, right. right. So, Micah, you recently joined Greensboro College. Do you want to talk a little bit about your background here? Yeah, man. Uh, so, I'm from Greensboro. Uh, so, I actually uh, got my undergraduate at A&T right up the street. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, I'm, I'm from here, born and raised. So, I have a special uh, place uh, here in Greensboro. It holds a special place in my heart. And so, coming here as a, as a counseling director was just, it was like, yeah, I got, you know, I kind of have to do that. Oh, yeah. Right? Um, and so I, I've enjoyed my time since I've been here so far. Everybody's like super nice, you know, super welcoming. Um, but my, I hope to just be able to impact the student population here because uh, I, I like the small feel, right? I'm an old country boy, so I like the small town, small feel. Everybody knows your name. Yeah. Everybody knows you and, and, can, and you have a, a team of people that you can count on when you need someone to count on, you know? Yeah. And so coming to Greensboro College kind of gave that to me. And so I was like, yeah, this this feels this feels right. And so here I am. I know you've only been here for a few weeks now, but speaking with some of our colleagues about the impact you're having on the college, so you've definitely gotten to off to a great start. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> so for this first episode, we're recording at the end of January and we're about to end of February, which is what the biggest holiday of the month is Valentine's Day. Yeah. So we're here to talk about relationships and dating here in college level. So, yeah. So, like, the first question I want to ask you about, can you talk about some of the challenges that college students is face when it comes to dating and relationships? Yeah, man. Like, dating in, in college is a very is, is common, right? Everybody's coming from different areas, different walks of life, uh, different states and, and stuff like that. Some people are coming from overseas, and they have dreams and aspirations of getting a college degree and kind of going on into their their adult life, but there's also relationship, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes we're taking a transition from high school to college to adulthood where this is my first experience of really being able to be myself as an adult. And so what that looks like in the context of a, a relationship can be very difficult, right? Mm -hmm. And so what I've noticed with a lot of college students is sometimes they have unrealistic expectations. Yeah. Right. So I expect that this is going to turn into a marriage in two months. Well, it's probably not. Yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> um, and so like that's that that kind of that kind of mentality can be harmful because when the relationship does not match your expectation, now we have a huge conflict. Right. Breakup happens and really learning how to manage breakup and be emotionally aware of what that relationship is doing to you. It's also an area where they kind of struggle a little bit per my experience, right? And so if I can impart things into, into the college population as far as relationship go, it'd be to start with those two things. Make sure you manage your expectations in a way that is reasonable for the relationship that you have, right? Like we're, we're dating, right? Yeah. We're not married, Right. So we got to manage those expectations, but I also have to learn how to be aware of my emotional self 
and what that looks like whenever difficulty happens in a relationship because it will happen. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm thinking about like my own experiences and I imagine your own experiences when we were students, like 18, 19, 20 years old, and you keep using the word expectations and communicating. And when you're that age, it can be a little awkward or kind of clunky. You're not familiar how to actually communicate those kind of feelings and emotions with others. Mm -hmm. So how can college students effectively communicate their needs and boundaries in like a dating relationship context? Well, one of the one of the things that I teach adult couples, um, like married couples and stuff like that, is they're called fair fighting rules. But I, I don't really like the terminology because it insinuates that I'm encouraging you to fight. Mm -hmm. I'm not encouraging you to fight. Right. Yeah. But if we do get into a situation where there's some contention, there's a couple of things that we want to remember. And the first rule on that list is about nine or ten of them. The first rule is to sit with what you feel first. I cannot explain to another person what I feel if I don't understand what I feel. It's almost like we're under, we're trying to get to an understanding about that feeling at the same time. Yes. And so it, it's only going to confuse them and frustrate me. And so now a situation that probably could have been about a two, three minute conversation is now a, a week long argument because I'm trying to explain to you how I feel and I don't know how to explain it because I haven't sat with it first. Yeah. Right. So I may take some time to say, Hey, this situation feels a little, a little hard for me. Let me let me take a minute. Let me just kind of sit with it, figure out how I feel about it. And so I can explain what I'm feeling to you. I can explain to you why this upset me. I can explain to you why this hurt me. I can explain to you why this made me feel invalidated mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be. And so you take that time, you sit with it, and then you come back to that individual, whoever your partner is, and you can have a conversation from that voice, right? Yes. Like, this hurt me because of this. Right. And so it starts to take away the accusatory language. You always, you yeah. never, you know, I don't like you, you know, <laughs> and stuff like that. It starts to kind of really take the argument out of it. And now we're in a, a dialogue. We're actually having a conversation now. Yes. And it's not necessarily about agreement as much as it is about understanding. I just need you to understand me. Yeah. I know, I mean, dating and relationships, it has its ups and downs. And it has this, yeah, and, and like you mentioned, like the dialogues, and even though we disagree, you understand me. Can you talk a little bit about like the red flags of warning signs for college students when it's not just like an actual like regular disagreement, but it might go beyond that? Uh, so when we start talking about red flags, which is like a, a common word now, right? Like everybody uses it. Oh, that's a red flag. Oh, that's a red flag. Or, yeah. You know, and I think uh, recently on like social media, a lot of people were talking about the kind of date you should go on. And so when we start using the word red flags in relationship, um, a lot of people were saying if they take you to Applebee's, it's a red flag and stuff like that. It was weird. Yeah. I was like, mm, I don't know. I think you're stretching I think it the, a little I think, bit. Yeah, the word <laughs> red flag, we're losing the meaning. Yeah, <laughs> but an actual red flag in a situation like that would be like if you start to feel like they're being controlling, right? you can't do this. I don't authorize you to do that, right? Like, it, or they start giving you ultimatums. Either you do this or I'm gonna leave, right? And so it starts to take away the sense of autonomy from the relationship where you have some agency about yourself and what you're willing to do, yes. right? And so you know, another, maybe in another podcast, we can kind of delve a little bit deeper into it. But when we start talking about intimate relationships among college students, inevitably we start talking about intimacy, right? And what that looks like and the idea of coercion and stuff like that. And so that word coercion, it doesn't just apply in intimate situations. It also applies in situations where intimacy isn't on the table. If I have to bribe you to do something, that's a red flag, yeah. right? Like I should be able to give you a sense of autonomy in the relationship to say no and that not mean, right, that we can't be together, you know? Everybody has boundaries and we have to identify what those boundaries are. So one of the biggest red flags that I see is that idea of control. When you were just giving that answer, I immediately thought of like the word just like independence. Mm -hmm. Like everyone, even though you're coming together for this dating relationship, like you're still your own person, you're still yeah. your own entity. So it's important to keep your independence and not just kind of do things that you're not comfortable with out of fear. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I tell people all the time, just because you're in a relationship or just because you're married or whatever the case may be does not mean that you lose your individuality. Mm -hmm. You're still who you are, and that person still needs to be nurtured. That person still needs attention, time, and effort, right, so that you can begin to show up in the relationship as yourself, 
right? So when you start to to appease the the needs and thoughts and feelings of another person and and escape from who you are, you start to lose yourself, yes. right? Like you get lost in the relationship. And so when that relationship ends, it's even the more devastating, right? Like yeah. that's where you get the the real depressive states, the 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 states that are like, you know what, this is never going to happen to me. And you build up these huge walls that are really hard to break through in other relationships. So I would, I would say that, man, like you have to make sure that you're able to keep your individuality, even though you're in a relationship. Um, starting, I guess, from the start of a relationship into like dating, since college students typically are usually between the age of 18 and 22, people on that age, they use dating apps and there's, there's so many out there. Do you want to talk about, I guess, like you, what you've observed like regarding dating apps and young people and college students using them? Sometimes, man, they get kind of reckless with them. Um, yeah, <laughs> you hate to you hate to say that, uh, but sometimes there's a level of irresponsibility that comes with it because the back to the expectation. Sometimes some people's expectations of this dating app is uh, unfortunately just to find someone to hook up with, mm -hmm. but that may not be everybody's expectation, right? Yeah. And so when those here again, when they clash, it can get bad, you know. A lot of a lot of harm has been done from dating apps where we just kind of hook up. I took it for more than what you took it for, and now we're in a back and forth on social media. I'm telling, I'm saying how bad of a person you are, and you're saying how how you feel about me in a negative light, right? And so it can be unfortunate if you don't use it correctly, right? I think that the dating apps and social media is a way to meet people. Right. Like it's a way for me to open the door because everybody's not comfortable just walking up to a stranger and saying, hey, how you doing? You know, my name is so and so. Uh, I, I really find you attractive and like to see if you want to go out to lunch with me. Like that's not easy for everybody. Some So the dating apps does take away that sting, that anxiety of just having to present yourself to someone in person. And so if we use it for that purpose. Right. It makes the introductory easier. Right. But a lot of times we're finding that's not what we're using it for, no. <laughs> right? And so I think that if we can use it for that purpose, it makes it easier. But that that trend of just like, nah, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm looking for somebody to hook up with. It's like, ah, I don't think that's the best way to use that. <laughs> and you might get yourself in more trouble, right? You might develop a reputation that you might not be able to get rid of, you know? And so that's that. those are some of the things that I think that college students have to consider when using dating apps. What kind of reputation am I trying to present to the world? And am I okay if this reputation gets out? Because it is social media, and it's very possible for it to get out. It's it's like um, with, like, the academic and professional reputation, mm -hmm. where what you do in the classroom, what you do at internships, like, that carries on with it you. It does. And it's, it sounds like a very similar situation with that. Very similar. Very similar. Even as adults, like, whatever you do on your social media, people can see it. And so you have to... Ask yourself, if someone were to see this, if someone were to know about what I'm using this dating app for, would I be okay with that? Yes. Right? Is that the type of person that I want to be displaying to a potential marriage partner, if that's what you want, to, want later on in life? Is that the type of person that I want to display to a potential suitor for someone to date or to take in a serious relationship or whatever the case may be? Is this okay if, if my parents see it? Right? Like, because... Social media is everywhere. Everybody can get it, right? Like, so so it's very possible that somebody that you hold near and dear can come across some information about you that you just don't want them to know. <laughs> and so I think we have to be careful with that, right? Like, so so present the image uh, that you want people to, to see, right? Like, yeah. present yourself as the person you want to be respected as, right? Because what you do on there has implications. It really does. Well, Mike, I wanted to ask you one more question before sure. we close up this first episode. Because sure. we're talking about college students. Yeah. So if you're a student, <laughs> I mean, you're still taking classes. You still yeah. um, have projects and homework you need to do. So you want to talk about, like, how do college students maintain, like, that balance of academic responsibilities and then, like, relationship dating responsibilities? I think, I think we have to – time management is your best friend when you know how to use it, right? Mm -hmm. And so I have to prioritize the thing – the reason why I came here. Right. I came to college to get an education and to and to set myself up in a specific career path. And so if that's my goal, right, that has to be my goal throughout. All I'm doing is allowing another person 
to enter into my world space and share some of this space with me as I share some of this space with them. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. And so in that particular vein, right, we want to make sure we keep first things first. And so, I, I, you know, one of the quotes that I've, that I've uh, heard over the years, I forget who said it, but it, it, it's, it's great, right? He said, relationship is, it works like this. I'm going to work on being the best version of me for you. You're going to work on being the best version of you for me. And so how that translates in college is that means that I'm going to work on being the best version of me. That means that I'm here to get a degree, so I'm going to have to put that first. And then everything else that happens after that, I'm going to include you in it at the level that I can, right? Yes. Not at the level that you may you may want, but it's at the level that I can. And the same thing works for you in the opposite direction, right? And so as long as we can converge on that that uh, that general purpose, right? Like we're here to get a degree first. We're here to get an education and start our careers. And we're going to allow each other to experience this with each other in an intimate relationship fashion. I think we can probably have a better experience. Well, thank you, Micah. Thank you um, for being here today. And sure. we hope you all enjoyed the first episode of Counseling Conversations, yeah. Insight from Greensboro College's Counseling Services. And we'll be recording very soon again. For sure, man. I appreciate it. To make an appointment with the Greensboro College Counseling Center, email counseling at greensboro.edu or call 336-217-7224, extension 5224. You can also stop by the Counseling Center's office Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. through 4.30 p.m. and Main Building Office 325 to make an appointment and speak with a counseling staff member.